live as well on Facebook. All right, so welcome everybody. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking time out of your day to uh, learn a little bit more about beta glucuronidase. Um, I've, I'm excited to talk to you today because I have prepared ahead of time some visual uh, pieces here that I think will help explain the concept because beta glucuronidase can be a bit confusing. Uh, and as I mentioned a moment ago, it's part of our one of our more comprehensive uh, stool tests called the GIFX comprehensive. Um, so this marker, uh, which you will see here, I have a sample report as well. So this is the GIFX comprehensive and beta glucuronidase is down here at the bottom. So you'll see the level of beta glucuronidase. And if the level is high, if it's you know high normal, high, you might think about a patient who uh, needs to have that addressed. So let's get right into it. Um, beta glucuronidase is a, an enzyme. It's made by the gut bacteria. It can, uh, if in high amounts, could mean that uh, that enzyme plays will will potentially lead to excessive recirculation of hormones, toxins, certain medications, um, things like that. So very high levels of it could mean that the patient has excess recirculation of those things going on. Um, how does that work? Well, it happens in uh, in phase two of liver detoxification where let's say we have a toxin here, toxin being processed through the liver, makes its way through the first phase. And in the second phase of liver detoxification, this toxin or hormone or whatever it is that the body needs to detoxify, we will have glucuronidation. And I apologize if that's showing up backwards, maybe you can see it better this way, glucuronidation there happens in phase two. What does that entail? Well, we will add in phase two a glucuronide molecule represented by this little blue piece of paper here, a glucuronide molecule added on to that toxin or hormone in phase two. So it goes from being just a toxin processed through liver detoxification in the second phase of liver detoxification, we add a glucuronide molecule onto it. That makes it more water soluble. It adds a negative charge to the toxin or hormone. Um, and that helps us get rid of it through stool ultimately. So we, we then excrete it through stool. So ideally it's eliminated like that and it's gone. However, when we have high amounts of beta glucuronidase here, that could potentially bind to that toxin uh, and glucuronide complex here. And that has the effect of popping off the glucuronide molecule. So that pops off. We're left with this, this complex here, which then dissociates. And then that toxin is free to recirculate back into the body. So, uh, that's how beta glucuronidase works. It, it basically happens here um, in the stool. Beta glucuronidase will bind to that complex, break off that glucuronide molecule. That essentially reverses part of phase two. So that's reversed. Um, so you don't want high levels of beta glucuronidase. Literature has associations with breast cancer, um, colorectal cancer. So it can be a problem because that could mean that the patient's recirculating more toxins and more hormones. Um, so uh, how we get around that is typically we will think about balancing the gut flora because in dysbiosis, it's pretty common to see higher levels of beta glucuronidase and because the bacteria in the gut uh, can induce or, or make beta glucuronidase Intervening there can be helpful for limiting the amount of beta glucuronidase that we produce. Uh, there is one other thing though, um, and you've probably heard of this, but calcium deglucurate, another little visual here. When calcium deglucurate binds to beta glucuronidase, it makes it less active. So it can't work as well to, to interact with this toxin uh, glucuronide complex here, and therefore 
it's inhibiting interaction there. So you get you end up getting less recirculation of this when calcium D glucurate is binding to beta glucuronidase. So uh, let's see here. Do I see any questions here? Hi, everyone. Thanks for checking in. Um, I don't see any questions, but uh, feel free to, to, to uh, chime in if you have any. But uh, that is sort of the long and short of it. So beta-glucuronidase living here in the gut can play a role in reversing phase two of liver detoxification. So uh, phase two also, we do acetylation, we do glucuronidation, we do um, conjugation with amino acids. So this is a very simplified diagram here. I realize that, but I wanted to simplify beta-glucuronidase because we get a lot of questions from clinicians when they see very high levels of it. What do we do about it? And so we'll always talk about uh, probiotics, fiber, things that help balance the gut flora tend to be really helpful for normalizing the level of beta-glucuronidase. Um, and then we'll, we'll think about calcium d as an option. I always think about calcium d as a temporary uh, fix. Ultimately, if we balance the gut flora, uh, we're typically going to see normalized beta-glucuronidase levels. So that's always, uh, I think, first in my mind. But calcium d is also a worthy consideration in some cases. So uh, I hope that helps. I hope that helps to clarify it, clarify, uh, clear things up or clarify um, what, what uh, beta-glucuronidase is, what it does, and why it can be helpful to measure it. Um, there's, it's a very complex enzyme, uh, so there's a lot to it. So I realize that, but uh, it is a pretty well-studied enzyme. It's, if, if you look in published medical literature on things like PubMed, um, you'll see thousands of articles referencing beta-glucuronidase in some form or fashion. So it's a really valuable tool to us as clinicians. Uh, it's part of our stool test, as I mentioned. Uh, the nice thing about stool testing is it is something that patients can do in the convenience of their own home. And so if you're doing more telemedicine these days, um, sending them a GIFX comprehensive kit, uh, you can get this marker and a lot of other helpful um, stool markers, biomarkers from stool. And so that's a great tool to have, especially these days when uh, people are on stay at home orders and, and can't leave. So I hope that's a useful tool uh, to you. And if you have questions about it, or if you have questions about test results, you're always welcome to give us a call. Uh, our number is 800-522-4762. Uh, my name is Warren Brown, part of the medical education team here at Genova, and it was great to be with you all today. I hope you're all safe and well. Um, I hope that uh, you're adapting to all the changes in healthcare going on right now, and that um, we're here to help if, if there's anything we can do testing-wise, so keep us in mind. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll just check here real quickly for questions, comments. Looks like. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of highs, waves, hello. Hi, everybody. Um, I will follow up with you next week. I think tomorrow Dr. Powell will be on, uh, Dr. Lenore Powell. So uh, tune in for that tomorrow afternoon. And uh, I hope you all stay safe and well. And I look forward to talking with you next time. So thanks a lot. Take care.